Hello and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bedrock with me, Mr. Beardstone. What a lovely statue that is. Today we are going to do this. And this. What? And this. Oh my, that looks absolutely ridiculous. And I have absolutely no idea what any of those this things were, because I'm recording this before I've even decided what I'm going to do today. What? Maybe I should fly over to the base and figure it out. So I'm looking around a little bit, I think what I've decided to do is to get- Oh no, server's restarting, I'm not doing anything right now. So what I was about to say before I was rudely interrupted by the server restarting is that I think I want to adjust this skyline over here. It's been the same for far too long. We've got a few buildings marked out down here as well. So I think first things first, let's do a funky time lapse with our funky time lapse music, which you all seem to love and we've not heard in a good few episodes, and build down here. That, my friends, is how you make a difference to a skyline in about an hour and a half. That was not too bad. So we actually ended up building that on stream. Let me land up here so you can get a proper look. But we did actually end up building this on stream. We had a lot of trouble with trapdoors, but it came together a lot quicker than I expected. So we've used the combination of blue terracotta, quartz of course, because apparently we just can't stop using quartz, as well as crimson wood for the lettering here and the trapdoor highlights and the orange sandstone, which really pops on the top of that building, and I love the look of that. On this build, I also decided to have a grassy style roof. However, we've ended up having to use moss because the trouble with grass is that the, well, cows were spawning up here and that is not what we want. That looked ridiculous. And on the inside, we have an absolute ton of space. What we don't have, however, is any idea what we're actually going to put in here. We had a chat on stream about what we could put in here, I've had my own thoughts as well, but we've come to zero conclusions. I mean, it could be a casino, it looks kind of casino-y, and that would mean we can make some games to try and get some truly tokens off of our fellow bedrockers, but are they even going to give them up? Probably not. Another option for in here would be a gold farm, because there's actually quite a lot of space, lots of vertical space especially, so you know, it wouldn't be a massive gold farm, but we could get probably three or four portals in there that are ticking, and then have a trident killer and so on, and maybe even just turn the bottom into a jewellery shop. But because I just could not decide what to do, I decided to erect another building, 
And I obviously have no idea what I'm going to do with the interior of this one either. But this is, of course, our lovely, wonderful theatre. And I think that sits nicely in that corner. It, it's starting to get a little bit bright over there. And I think the darkness of the theatre combined with the blue just really, really pops. Now, there's not quite so much space in this building. And I, once again, obviously have absolutely no idea what to put in there. But it has got me thinking. I know we've been putting farms in all of these. But we're at a point now where we've got most of the farms we need. So there's no reason why I couldn't just decorate this like an actual theatre. But once again, if you do have ideas of what we can do, I would really love to hear them. There's, there's no limit to the amount of farms we can put in here. It's just our imagination and what we know and what we can find on YouTube. And then, of course, try and cram them into these buildings. While I was constructing the theatre building, however, I was over here making some glass and we had a visitor. And it was time for us to break someone's heart. Based on... Oh my days, you just scared the life out of me. Did you just fly yes. straight in? Yes, it's very urgent. I need your help. Uh, okay, what's up? Uh, it's, it's, it's on the matter of uh, Alice. What's an Alice? I don't... Are you kidding me right now? Alice, giant robot, giant Voltron out of uh, trucks. You worked what? on it, you made it. We have a golden opportunity here. Uh, so, rem remember my sentient shop? You have an entire garage worth of giant robots! How about... We maybe build something a little bit bigger? Yeah, do you have... What? Oh my god, you are alive! Uh, Hi! Yes, Alice! Alice, I... I, I, I do remember that was that was really weird. Uh, yes, yeah. I, I do remember Alice. Yes, Alice, the big big AI yeah, robot. Star. Yeah. Yes. So, I I never told anyone about this, but Alice might be here on this server too, um, and I might need your help bringing them back. Bring Follow it. me, Alex. I'll, I'll explain it on the spot. It's easy to understand there. You remember All Star last season? A shop that sells everything uh, at a price, yada yada. Went sentient, became a person. Yep, I remember that. May or may not have sacrificed uh, themselves when uh, being absolutely annihilated by meteors, right? Uh, yeah, that, yeah. I've got vague memory of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what if I told you that they might still be alive? Before the, sh the store, the previous season and the entire previous world has been absolutely annihilated by the meteors of the moon, I have snatched this shulker box off of Alice's, off of Alice's face interface. Right. And yes. how's that going to help? Well, you see, this is this is all I have left of them, and for the for this entire season. I've been trying to spark them back into living. So, I already tested. It does not necessarily react to redstone in any way a shulker box wouldn't. Like, it doesn't really do much. But then I realized, it, it's because it's not because of the redstone. It's because it's not redstone. Like, have you, have you wondered why everything I've been doing this season resembles the original All Star so much? The, the, the custom currency, the money, the, uh, the everything, the stuff that people can buy and sell into. Well, I mean, now, now, now you mention it, yeah. Yeah, the, I, I guess serious. you have been, yeah. That's because I realized that the reason they weren't reacting to redstone is because they don't react to redstone. I, my theory was that the reason Alice Became, it came into sentience was specifically the socio-political reasons of the truly bedrock server, the active role play that we all are propagating. So I decided to try and recreate as much of that within the dump shop as I could. And you know, it led to the amazing results. Right, okay, do tell, do tell. I'm, I'm curious now, I can't really see how that links together yet, but carry on. It didn't react at all again! Right, what, they, the... There have been no changes in, the, in their conditions, I don't get it, Bitstone! Um, well, don't, you know, just just throwing it out there, just throwing it out there, but in order to, you know, recreate Alice and so on, wouldn't you have been better off grabbing the computer and not the monitor? What? 
Well, that that's her face, right? That's 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 the output interface. Where's where's the input? The input was the, well, like I it was the the moon was falling. I couldn't just grab a giant redstone contraption. I just grabbed the a monitor, basically. This thing is completely useless, isn't it? Um, yeah. I, I mean, it looks nice. It's nice to have a memory of Alice, I guess, but I, I, I don't see how it's going to help you, I'm afraid, Zoe. It's... It has no actual data it's in it. N no. No, just... It's, it, it's basically a picture. Essentially, yeah. It's a picture that you can't see until you open the box. I... I... I, I thought... I... I made all this? I drove diamonds out of the market? I printed hundreds of books? Do you know how much feathers and ink I made? It's a nice I painting thought. though, it's a nice picture. Need me for anything else? Or... No, no, I just... You can, you can put the book back that you broke, but... Safe to say, I think we just crushed all of Zloy's hopes and dreams about Alice there. It was, of course, a little bit unintentional, but, you know, he wanted to know why it wasn't working, and if you want a computer to work, bring the computer. So back over here in the city, I think there's something else I want to do, because there's a giant advert over here for the dumb shop, and I absolutely love it. We are going to build a building here that's going to kind of integrate that sign into it. But something we have that I don't love is this empty roof and a big purple thing sitting behind it. So we're going to put a big advert up here for the Barn Bros Flying Bazaar. So I think we're going to put quite a big sign up here. It's probably going to be most of the width of the roof here. And I think just getting the Barn Bros logo that we've got on the blimp on one side of it and maybe a little something something on the other side. So I'm going to go grab some resources and see if I can get something up here that's, well, just kind of gets rid of that giant horrible purple wall, to be perfectly honest. The sign wasn't quite big enough for a full size logo and it's a bit too big for a small logo. So this is where we're going to fit in a couple of other little details and I should have the blocks on me to do that. Oh my, that looks absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I am however going to keep it because I like it I like ridiculous and yeah as you can see I've added myself and tis to the sign and if we ever manage to coax Silent Whisperer over to the Barn Bros you know shopping side of things then uh, I'm sure we can squeeze him on somewhere so despite creating distractions for myself so I can think about things I still haven't really decided what to put in here and what to put in the other building so with that I think what I might do instead is is maybe Maybe get up another building or two over here. I mean, I know we don't know what we're going to be putting in them, but that doesn't mean we can't continue changing the skyline, right? And then we can always just come back and we can, you know, we can put farms in these, we could do the interiors. But if we can get these two buildings up here, that's going to give us a really nice area of the city that's actually complete-ish. Just don't talk about the interiors. I just distracted myself in real life with a cheese toasty, and even then, I, when I came back, all I could think about was getting those buildings down. So that's exactly what we're gonna do.
never again. Never again am I going to plan a build with that many bees nests in it. Oh my life, that took ages trying to get all those. So over the last five or six weeks, I've been growing birch next to flowers in places like that and harvesting bee nests. And I was like, yep, yeah, okay, you know, I've got almost a stack. That's probably enough. It was nowhere near enough. Turns out I ended up using almost two stacks here. So it's actually a day and a half since I said I was going to get these buildings down. I've had more than one more cheese toasty since then. I mean, what can I say? I'm, I'm turning into a toasty fiend and I blame Groover. Which means I've also managed to do a lot of thinking while collecting these bits ready for the build. But eventually I was ready to do the time lapse on this half as well. And when it comes to what farms are going in these buildings, well, I think this one here might be fairly obvious what we're putting in. But this one, yep, still no plans. So the other thing about these bee nests is, of course, I had to make sure they were empty. You can see that I failed because, well, one of these door ones had at least two bees in and they've been flying around for half the time lapse. But obviously, you know, there's, there's kind of only one way to empty bee nests. And as a result, we now have a ridiculous amount of bee heads. Some saw it coming and some didn't, but we're probably going to have to find something to do with those. There's just way too many for one man to have sitting in a chest. So that film will, of course, be a honey-related shop. We're going to have bee farms in the roof. But this one, I'm still not entirely sure. I'm quite tempted to actually make it a sort of secondary villager hall. Maybe get a few more masons in there. And by a few more, I mean maybe like 20 masons. Because that way we're going to be able to get hold of the courts we're using much quicker and I'm going to spend a lot less time hanging around in the current villager hall. And I spend a lot of time there. I think my favourite thing about getting these buildings up is making the city skyline look a lot more complete, especially from here down in the middle of the sort of main high street, I guess. This is probably the main high street. I think it's the only one that's this width. But from here, you can just basically spin around in a circle and you've just got tall buildings everywhere and it's looking nice and complete. It's just missing a lot of the details. So we are of course going to need to carry on these street lights all the way round, we're going to need to get in the rail for the tram line as well, and that's going to have to go all the way round here, and also of course down that way and across the front of our main sort of storage building. And speaking of infrastructure, we've got a bit of work to do and a little bit of figuring out as well, because yes the bee shop looks wonderful, it sits nicely, but it's kind of got a path that's not really connected to anything, so I think we're going to have to put some some kind of pedestrianised bit maybe in here. We could have a small pedestrianised bit with the rail that goes through and so on. I don't really know. We could even just put in a sort of zebra crossing, pelican crossing. I'm not entirely sure what they're called these days. But if we were to put something in, I think that will tie that together. And we can always have paths on this side that will lead round and go all the way over to that bit over there, which also wasn't there earlier. So this is essentially the turning circle for the end of the road over at this side. I was hoping to have enough space to get a couple of, well, what looked like parking spaces in as well, so it became kind of a viewpoint for the TV wipeout area, but when I realised that we've just got billboards, big signs, and well, there's probably going to be other billboards there by the time I'm done, there's not actually that much to look at. So I think this is just puts a nice sort of end on the road, we'll get some trees in there and make that look a bit nicer, and then we've still got space for parks on this side, and maybe some more buildings over here. So throughout building this city, I'm always thinking of the bigger picture, where we're going to have buildings, where the views are going to be, what views are going to be blocked, and there is one view that I must, must, must block, and that is the view from here where I can just see the pooping bird that I built. And I don't regret building it, I really don't. I'm, I'm glad I did that. I'm, I'm glad I tried to teach Tiz a lesson, although he's decided he likes it and is going to keep it. And that means that I need to block it off from here because it just looks ridiculous in the background of my city. But that's enough waffle about what we're going to be doing over this side. We need to get these buildings finished. And by finished, of course, I do mean we're going to need to get some interiors in these. So once again, if you do have any ideas of what farms you want to see me put in these, please do let me know in the comments below. But sadly, that's all we've got time for today. So that's going to have to wait for another day. If you have enjoyed the episode, please do leave a like and do consider subscribing if you're new here. And I'll see you all on the next episode of Truly Bedrock. Bye-bye now.